and welcome. You are tuned in to BRT2 TV. My name is Jan Ghazi and this is A Cup of Conversation. Or today could be called A Glass of Wine because joining me in the studios of BRT Kane Kosher is the lovely Natalie Haig and she is the Marketing and Sales Manager at Etel Winery which recently opened in the hills of Guinea in Ilgaz. So we're going to find out more about this company and about wine in North Cyprus. First of all, Natalie, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much, Jan. And or should I say Hoshkin, because I know that you know Turkish. Yes, teşekkürler. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, Natalie, before we talk about the reason why you're here and about the winery, mm -hmm. let's find out more about you, because I know that you've been living in Cyprus for 12 years now, is that That's right? That's right, yes, 12 years I've been here. I came here for one month 12 years ago, and myself and my husband, we were travelling, well, we planned on travelling for 12 months around Europe. We came to North Cyprus, fell in love with the country, and we've stayed. So North Cyprus was your first, one of your first stops? First destinations and, uh, and the final? It. Yeah, <laughs> first and only destination. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good trip around Europe. But what an amazing story though, I mean you love it so much yeah. that you stayed. It was just meant to be one month yeah. and now here you are 12 years on. We are 12 years on. So uh, where are you from originally in the UK? Originally in the UK I'm from Shropshire. Shropshire. In the Midlands, yeah. And what was your profession back in the UK? Uh, so marketing. Marketing. I worked in travel for just over six years in the UK, long haul travel, um, marketing and sales. And then um, I worked for a local authority, um, again, promoting the, uh, the town and, and travel within the town, how to, uh, to get around the town. And then uh, we came out here um, and I've worked in various different organizations here um, and, and now I'm working for Etel Winery. A nice story, so you decided to settle in North Cyprus Correct. and you've been here uh, working for various companies, I'm sure people recognize you from a certain bank maybe, Yes. And that's how yes. uh, you remembered me from that bank's uh, many many events, uh, events. That's right. uh, but it's great to see you here in the Thank studios. You. You. So how long have you been working for Etel, Was this, how did you get to be with the Etel Winery. Okay, well, I've, I've known uh, one of the directors for a number of years, um, and Etel Winery project was a project that was very close to my heart. It's something that I believe is a great investment for North Cyprus, a great development for North Cyprus, and I suppose my love and enthusiasm for it um, came across when in various conversations with the director to the point where he said, "Right, come on board." Um, and of course I jumped at the chance and I've been with the company since June of this year um, although as I said I've been involved in the planting and uh, the, the, from, from the beginning as in knowing about it and hearing about it and what's going on I've been following the project as it's developed so tell us a bit about the project then. So uh, I know that in the press, we've, we've seen you in the press and uh, you've recently done a, a radio interview as well that um, you're bringing an old tradition, 6,000 year old tradition, back alive again. Correct, yeah. So what is Etel Winery all about? What's it trying to do here in North Cyprus? Well, obviously, as you've just said, I mean, wine, uh, vines have been grown and grapes have been pressed in Cyprus since the Bronze Age. Uh, there's evidence of that. And the way we feel that North Cyprus um, and what we're doing at Etel Winery is bringing that tradition back to life. Um, the methods that we're using um, with our artists and vintners, uh, they are traditional method so we follow everything within um, the, the from grape to bottle is done by ourselves we don't um, outsource any aspect of the viticulture um, we manage everything in-house we monitor the vines on a daily basis um, we monitor the grapes on a regular basis to make sure that we only pick them at their optimum maturity um, to enable us to produce fantastic Cypriot wine it sounds really nice uh, for the wine lovers out there. This is going to be a unique experience. We'll talk yes. more about the experience a bit later yeah. on because I know that you had an open day recently. But yeah. let's go back to, uh, we're looking at, uh, well, you've got three stages in your journey. That's you, right. You're yeah. calling it a journey now. With yes, your, it's a with journey, your, yes. And Eto Winery is the first stage. Eto Winery is the first stage of and, and is now complete of our journey. Um, we're then moving on. Um, we will have a tourism centre. At the tourism centre, Gillam's Wine Culture, guests will be able to come along, do wine tasting tours. Um, we will have conference facilities so people can hire our facilities to do maybe training sessions um, for their own corporate events they can do but we will also be offering education in wine the whole point of what we're about is to educate people here about how to appreciate wine how to enjoy wine how to enjoy decent wine um, and we will also be 
within the tourism centre we will have a wine bar. The wine bar will, will be having regular events, musical events, um, com possible international musical events coming over. Um, we will also then have the boutique hotel. The hotel is going to be open again in spring next year, Gillen Vineyard Hotel, with rooms set overlooking our vineyards. And we will have a wine spa within the hotel, as well as an a la carte uh, chef restaurant. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a big journey, but one that we will complete and we will do it well. Wow, sounds amazing. Sounds like a fairy tale journey it is, at the yeah. moment. It sounds really, really good. So looking at the names, Etel Winery, mm -hmm. and I just asked you before we started the interview off air about the name, and can you tell us the story? Yeah, what the Etel, comes Etel from? Um, is one of our director's wife's name. Um, our director used to travel regularly to North Cyprus with his wife, and they could never find a decent wine that they, they're, they're well traveled, they're gourmet, they like good food, they like great wine. And because they couldn't find this in North Cyprus, they used to bring it with them whenever they traveled here. <laughs> um, one evening, sort of just as a joke, they sat there and said, wouldn't it be great if one day we could have our own winery and vineyard here in North Cyprus? And that's how the dream began, uh, three, just over three years ago. Um, so they bought the vines, they found the land, um, the, it was all planted. Um, and then, uh, but sadly, Etel uh, was not able to see the end of the journey. She passed away last year. Oh. Um, so to keep her spirit alive within uh, the, the, the company, we, the, the wine and the winery is named after her. So we feel that she's still with us and, and enabling her to complete the journey that she set out to do with her husband. What a lovely story. Shame that she couldn't see the final. Yeah dream come true yeah. but her name will live on her name will live on her spirit will live on and we believe that that you know that's uh, that, that she is with us in, in spirit so so we have a winery now that is, yeah. that is open mm -hmm. and as you said you've got um, a vineyard correct but are you actually making the wines at the moment I mean yes. you we're in the process of making our wines we've completed our first harvest at the beginning of August mm -hmm. uh, we've set so up until today we've harvested three different varieties of grape our white wines uh, sh should be ready at um, the end of this year, beginning of next year. Um, however, in the meantime, guests don't have to wait until the fruits of our first harvest to taste great wine. Um, the reason for that is that our resident winemaker and our twin wineries together have produced select wine specifically for Etel um, that we've brought in from abroad. Um, and 50% of those wines were also made by our winemaker at her previous winery. So we can serve uh, the, the decent wine to our guests um, and it will get a taste of what's to come basically. They're, it's made specifically for us with the same grape varietals that we have mm -hmm. so that people will actually be able to taste what will eventually be available from Cypriot grapes. So eventually, will you then, once you're making your own wine available at the location, yeah. mm -hmm. you will not be importing? No, correct. You don't need to import, no, it's the same, no. exactly the same wine. So you can take some wine now, yeah. because it's coming from abroad. Yes. And it's the same, unique to North Cyprus, we yes. have to say this, that yes. it's not uh, distributed around the world no. to any other country no. apart from North Cyprus. Label. It's Etel's and the, the family's dream. Mm -hmm. And then later on, once, you, once the, the actual winery is complete and you know, up and running with the, the wine once, ready. Once the wine is ready, when our, which like I said, the white wines will yeah. be ready the end of this year. So, oh, this is good. And everything is done in-house. So from grape to production of wine to bottling to corkage is done in-house. We don't outsource any part of the viticulture. So, Fantastic. Um, yeah, everything will be done, which obviously provides for local people, it provides jobs, it provides an investment. Um, we've brought in uh, experts from abroad to um, teach us on how we match the soil to the specific grape varieties. We've brought in um, our winemaker, she's training up local people. The agronomist has trained up a local person who's now our vineyard supervisor and he now runs the vineyard. So basically the way that we look to operate is bringing in experts in each field so that we, we then can train up local people to do the job. So we, will, we are investing in the local community as well. That's really, really good to hear. And let's just mention now, if people don't know already where the location is, you're up in the, the mountains, the mountain. got a very nice yeah. location in Ilgaz, yeah? In Ilgaz, yes. As you head um, out towards Alsanjak, 
You take a left up towards Yeshil Tepe, go through Yeshil Tepe, keep going up the mountain until you can't go any further really. And we're on the right hand side, you'll see the vineyards planted and there is signage and everything. So come along. Our tasting room is open from Tuesday to Sunday. Uh, so yeah, the people can come along, they can taste, do a wine tasting experience. They can sit, they can enjoy their wine. They can come up and just enjoy wine and cheese overlooking the vineyards, watch the sunset. It's a fantastic location. It's a great place to work. It's a fantastic location. <laughs> what a great place to work. Yeah, I'm sure you're not you know, worried about, oh, do I have to go to work again no, today? It's, it's a great not. job to go to every morning. Definitely not, yeah. How many wines are on offer? You, you mentioned about you know, the white wine. Do you have um, different style, you know, different white wines, red wine? We have a selection of uh, three white wines and we also have a selection of three red wines. Mm. Different, uh, the red wines are blended wines, and then our white wines, we have our Gillen White, which is our entry-level wine. We then have Sauvignon Blanc and Chenin Blanc as well. So mm. we, have a, a, a wide, we have a wine to suit every palate. And I'm sure that uh, there'll be lots of people rushing over there to, to taste so. it. So. You had your opening not so long ago. Yes. Uh, I know they had a day for the protocol yeah. where you actually spoke in English and Turkish, or was Correct. it just in yes. Turkish? Uh, Turkish. Just Turkish. You were given the job of uh, speaking to the, the Turkish protocol. Mm -hmm. And who did you have there? Said that English was yes, there. Yes, he came. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And was he impressed? Then came. Yeah, yeah. They seemed to enjoy themselves. You know, at the end of who the wouldn't? day. <laughs> The, the opening for the feedback that we've had on, from the opening was that everybody th thinks that this is going to be a great um, advantage to North Cyprus, something that's going to be a, a, a spot on the map that visitors to North Cyprus will want to go and see and will want to, to enjoy and, um, yeah. and, and taste the experience, basically. So, yeah. And after the protocol day, you had, you know, you had also people coming in and out. Correct. We had our, our general public open day. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that was very well attended. Um, and everybody who came along, the feedback that we've received was that they all enjoyed the wine, which is at the end of the day what we're all about. So, yeah. yeah. So, and I think you said um, throughout the whole day about 200 people or yeah, over 200? Two, over 200 came through, yeah. Not bad, considering... No. Considering it's a brand new project, yeah. considering it's not something that's been done before. Um, yeah, it was, it was very well attended. It was well attended by mainly the, the non-Cypriot community mm -hmm. um, uh, because I think they're more aware of what wine tasting is about and, and what wine, and that is what we, we look to educate the local community on how to appreciate wine and wine culture, which is where our Gillam's Wine Centre comes in with courses. I think that, um, you know, uh, there's a lot to learn. Yeah. It isn't just, you know, going and drinking wine. I mean, I'm not... I mean, I do enjoy wine mm -hmm. when it's given to me, but I'm not really a big uh, connoisseur of wine, but I'm sure we're going to learn a lot. And uh, it's something that uh, everyone can enjoy, uh, the adults in particular, of course, only for the adults. Yes, that's right. Um, we have a video coming up yes. now. And this is sort of like... Uh, as you said, you've got three parts of your journey. So this is this showing is, journey one. This is part, part one of part our one. journey. Yeah, this basically shows you from where we came from, um, from what, what it used to look like, what it, it looks like now, how we brought in the vines and, and basically the, the whole process that we've gone through from, from start to up to now. As I said, the journey is continuing. It's not by no means complete, but this is the end of the first first part of the journey. Okay, so to summarise the end of part one of the journey, that is uh, the winery and we've got lots of things to talk about. Uh, let's have a look at what uh, Natalie's brought in. I mean, back after with this, uh, after this clip, with more to speak with, uh, with Natalie, so don't go away.
Well, an amazing four minute clip there that uh, the lovely Natalie has brought in with her today to show us the, well, the, the first part of the journey that is Etel Wainui and uh, Natalie, really interesting, as, as we were watching that, you explained to me about how, you know, for instance, you know, the, the trucks bringing the, the, the uh, you know, the, the, um, the vines, yeah. planting the vines, yeah. and everything is transplanted as well, you know, even if you had to move a, a tree. Yeah, everything that, we, everything that we take out, if we have to move anything that's uh, local, for yeah. example, you saw there the transplantation of the olive tree. Yeah. You know, we, d we don't cut things down. We believe in nature and, we, and the way that the vineyards have been designed is to, to uh, give as least impact on nature as, as possible. You know, when we come, for example, to the wine spa um, in the future, all the grape skins, everything that is, is sort of wastage um, from the production of wine will go into the wine spa to provide wine pe peelings and facial masks mm. and everything. Yeah, so basically any, anything that's wastage from the winery will be recycled into beauty products. Fantastic. So everything that we do is, 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 is ideally recycling as much as we can. It looked really good, and you got the uh, you know people there, the experts there. You had the locals. We saw the grapes. Now these grapes are actually unique, aren't they? You can't buy these grapes from any of the supermarket shelves, no, can you? Uh, no, these grapes are, uh, are wine grapes. Mm -hmm. They they're not your uh, no, pick eating them grapes. You, you can eat them. They're very um, sweet, um, and the clusters are very tight. Mm. Um, lots of fruit on them, quite small fruit, um, but very sweet to taste. Um, we harvest at, uh, at night, we don't harvest during the day. The mm -hmm. reason for that is that that's the optimum temperature to have for, for the harvest because during the day and the heat produces more sugar into the grapes. Right. So the cooler the weather, the, the better it is for, for, the, for the actual grapes. So you haven't got somebody during the day walking around in their bare feet in, in a vat of grapes? No, <laughs> <making the> no. <laughs> it's all done very, very professionally. It is, it's yes. all, yeah. But um, it looks fantastic. And as we said, you've got a great location in Ilgaz, yes, uh, just outside right. Guinea, in Alson Jack. So uh, it's, a, it's a place where everyone can you know, yeah. go to easily, easily. especially uh, tourists on holiday in the Guinea yes. area can, yeah. can uh, you know, put it down on their list of to do of, things. Of to do things, yeah. So, for instance, uh, when you first were involved with this project, mm -hmm. and it's something that's close to your heart, uh, were you or are you a wine connoisseur? By no means. <laughs> By no means am I a wine connoisseur. Um, I like wine, um, but I n didn't know how to appreciate wine. Um, and I'm still learning, you know. I mean, uh, we, we've had a couple of tastings now within, uh, so that we all learn about the wine and how to taste. and. And my first tasting, some of my colleagues who were a bit more au fait with, with wine were, were pointing out different flavours in the wine. They could pick this spice out and that. In. And I was sort of completely, not completely oblivious, but I couldn't actually pick out specifics. We then had a second wine taste a couple of weeks later, uh, same wines, and um, I actually surprised myself. I could pick out um, the d green apple in the Sauvignon Blanc, for example, mm -hmm. licorice in Aguilum Red. And these were things that I couldn't taste in our previous tasting. So I believe, I believe uh, and, and, um, that when we provide education to people, that they will understand and ha how to appreciate good wine. And that's what they can come and do. You know, we're now, as I said, our tasting rooms are open, so they can come up and, and learn about how, it, how it, for me, it was a, it was a, a bit of a shock on the second tasting to, to be able, gosh, that actually tastes like, uh, you know, green apple or, or, or licorice. And, and yeah, it's, it's Amazing. interesting, very interesting to educate your palate on how to taste, pick things out and how to taste the different. Because isn't there like a certain way where you have a, a big glass of wine and you sniff it first yeah, and you, you swish, have, it yeah, around, swish it around and then... You never you hold your glass like that, by the way. Oh, you hold sorry, it well, by the stem. Oh, it's by the stem. <laughs> See, that's how good I am. Again. <laughs> so you teach all that. Yeah, we You'll just swish it around, hold it by the around, stem, not under the... Yeah, not, 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 not like... Because that heats the wine up. Yes. So there's a reason why. The smells and the aromas. And then, of course, you don't actually swallow it, do you, either? You can swallow it. Uh, you don't have to swallow it. Um, yeah, you, you swill it around, you sniff, you, you can check the colour. There's obviously different colours depending on how long it's been placed in barrels for, yeah. if it's been placed in barrels. Of, um, and you, you swill it around and you, you smell the aromas. Um, basically, wine tasting involves your four main senses. The, the, your, your sight, your taste, your, your smell. Um, and you basically swirl it around, sniff it, and then you can taste it.
and yeah, it's 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 a it's a great experience. It sounds like a great experience. And now, when you go out dining, for instance, yes. at a restaurant, are difficult. you more <laughs> when you order the wine? Are you more sort of like? No, I think I'll choose this now. And do you know what to expect? It's yeah, educated yeah. You. you. Yes, it has. In the short space of time, yeah. yes. And I'm sure that the longer that the, the journey progresses, the more expert and wine sort of connoisseur I, I hope to become. Um, but yeah, going out here now with with friends and, and that sitting in a restaurant, it's like, oh, you're the wine expert. You choose the wine. Um, you know, like I said, by no means am I a wine expert, but um, you do taste different things in, in the wine that maybe before, I, I, well, I, I never used to taste. So. Is it true that when a waiter brings you, the, let's say you choose a wine, the waiter brings you wine and pours a little bit out and you try to taste it, is actually to find out if it's off or not, isn't it, I think? Generally, more than yes, not whether, it's, whether to your... it's to your... Because obviously my palate's different to your palate, yeah. it's different to my guest palate. So, it, you know, it's, it's to taste whether it, it, it's... So they try and get out on you. Yeah. Just as this way, see yeah. oh, if it's all right or not. Yeah. But yeah. there's a joke going around. There was a joke, you know, saying, oh, you know, if you don't, you know, you're going to get uh, poisoned. You know, yeah. not, not not the people from the the restaurant, but you know, you, the guest gets poisoned. But yeah. just as just as yeah. joke. But yeah, so you can learn. You know, it, it can actually be a day out for yeah. somebody. And the other thing we're looking to do, we can. We're also looking to educate. You mentioned wine waiters. Wine waiters here don't necessarily know how to pour wine properly. Mm. How to open the bottle. Yeah. How to take the the seal off. Um, that sort of thing we will be offering to to come you know larger companies that have wine waiters so it sounds really basically for us it's introducing wine culture into North Cyprus see I'm really ignorant now about that and I didn't know there was a, a certain way I mean I'm always the one that has to open the wine at home my sister goes go on you know because we, we like a bit of wine every now and then on the weekend and um, you know I'm, I'm doing all the opening and you know popping or you know corking the but there is a certain way to so everything even everything even down to pouring like you just said if I hold my wine glass so even down to how you hold yeah. the wine glass don't hold it like that, don't hold it with like the, from the stem so don't heat up the wine. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So it's a learning experience. So it's so a learning experience. What was, the, what was the reaction like then in the area and on your first opening for the public? Was it a positive reaction? Are people amazed? Were you surprised at what people were... I mean, were you, did, were you expecting around 200 people in the I, first yeah, day? Yeah, I was hopeful that uh, 200 people would come. Um, but I didn't... Uh, yeah, I was hopeful that that amount of people would, would come and visit us. Um, I didn't expect the steady flow of people throughout the day, mm -hmm. um, but it was, and everybody that I that we spoke to on the day and since said how how nice it is to have a nice wine to be able to drink and appreciate um, here in North Cyprus. Um, and obviously, following on from the event, people have bought wine and, and come back. You know, we're only what four days after the opening event, and we've already got regular people visiting us and, and coming along and, and buying a bottle to take home or a bottle yeah. to eat. Uh, they like it so much. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. I mean, you know, you don't really appreciate these things until someone I offers until it Until someone to you. actually puts it in front of yeah. you, um, you don't necessarily appreciate it. But I think for, from a, our main uh, sort of object, if you like, is to educate people, expats, local people alike in wine culture. Um, and obviously tourists, bring tourists to the island, offer something that d has never existed. Well, obviously it existed years ago, but doesn't exist in North Cyprus. And everything's all on one place. We have the hotel, we have the tourism centre, we have our vineyards and we have our winery. So it's an estate. Whereas other places that you may go to in the south, you have your winery and you have your hotel. Nothing is in the same place. Right. So whereas with us, it's all in you know all under one roof so part one is now complete yes thanks to the opening recently part two is the tourism center um, and the hotel combined and the hotel combined yeah. so um, you are hoping I mean obviously this is a, a long-term project you've got lots of work to do but yeah. when do you hope that the hotel will be up and running the hotel will be up and running by May t next year May 2018 we will be open for business Fantastic. So something to look forward to. Yes, yeah. Uh, so watch this space. Watch the developments. Yeah, watch the developments. I'm sure um, people in the area, the locals, are going to be interested in... I mean, are you hoping to get lots of people booking from abroad? I mean, you said yes. about tourism. Yeah. And even though, you know, it's not something that... I, I don't know whether people would go abroad to try and taste local wine, but do you think that there are people who are going to be going... There are. Like, I who, mean, there are specific wine tours. Mm. that you can go travelling around Europe to different wineries tasting 
and staying and, and enjoying wine. So that's, you know, that we will become part of a wine tasting tour. Right. Um, so, you know, two nights here, three nights in Italy, three nights in France, so on and so forth. So, yeah, it's, it, that's, you know, that's part. There are groups specifically who travel around the world visiting wineries and tasting wine. Amazing. So hopefully you'll be, you know, getting a good market yes. uh, from you know, that type of tourism. Exactly, yeah. As and well as the, the, your average visitor to North yeah. Cyprus who, who you know, you, when, you are, when you go on holiday, when you arrive on holiday, your tour guide says, oh, look, we have these different tours. And you look at them and you, you analyse which one's good. We will hopefully be one of the top spots that you should visit, like Salamis, like San Marian. Yeah. Of course. I mean, when you go abroad and you go on a tour yeah. and then you know, the operator offers you different tours within that tour, yeah. then you could be within, you yeah. know, exactly. that sort of operation, which is really, really good. Something fun. What about, let's say, locals and, let's say, husband and wife want to celebrate an anniversary or something? Yeah. Would it be nice? I mean, would you advise, obviously it's not for children because children no, can't exactly. drink wine, yeah. but yeah. let's say you know, mum and dad or a young couple yeah. want to celebrate a special anniversary or a special yeah. occasion, yeah. will you be able to have like a nice package deal where yeah, we so spend the night there yeah. um, and then taste the wine. The wine tasting as part and of your overnight stay. Yeah. You know, and obviously with our chef restaurant as well, with a la carte food that will be available throughout the whole estate, not just in the restaurant at the mm -hmm. hotel. Um, yeah, we'll be offering packages like that, two nights, maybe one night overnight stay that will include, we're offering a variety. I mean, for us, because everything is in-house, everything is within our um, decision-making process, we can decide what we want to offer and how we want to offer it, um, based on market research, obviously, and demand. It really is fascinating, and you know, we don't know what we're missing until somebody provides it. You think, wow, where was this before? Exactly. Why didn't we have yeah. such a location? And now we're lucky in North Cyprus to have somewhere like this, you know, yeah. Etel Winery, the first stage in the journey. Yeah. Um, do you foresee more development in the future? Do you, do you think that it's going to pick up where you'll actually start selling this wine to local restaurants, or would it be? Exclusive. I mean, will people only be able to taste Etel wines at the winery? To begin with, they'll only be able to taste it with us um, because for us, it's not about necessarily selling the wine and mass distribution. For mm -hmm. us, it's about the whole experience. So when they come to us, we can explain to them about the different wines. We can exp they can sit, they can enjoy the different wines. They can then sit uh, overlooking the vineyards, drinking a bottle of whatever one they, they preferred from their tastings. Um, we, it's still under discussion with regards to distribution, but it won't be mass, produ won't be mass distribution. Um, for, for now, it is only available at, at Etel, so. Which is good, yeah. you know, one location, go there, taste the wine, and if and you love it, I like go I said, back. It's, it's not just about the wine, it's the whole experience that, that, that people can have. It is a magical location. I mean, it you is. know, that part of um, the island, Ilgaz, up in the mountains is really nice. Yes. It's beautiful. And so you've got a nice area where you can sit and, you know, look at yeah. the, uh, the sea or the mountains yes. or the, the yeah. view below, yeah. below you. Yeah. It's overlooking the vineyards down to the sea. So from what time until what time are you open? Uh, you mentioned briefly that you open from Tuesday, Tuesday to Sunday. To Sunday. Monday's closed. Mondays is our, is, is our day that we're closed. Um, we're open from, um, during the week we're open from 11 till 7. At weekends, at the moment, we're going to be doing possibly 11 till 7, but we may extend it because obviously, as the season progresses, the sunset becomes earlier. Yeah. So it will depend on, on the sun. But we won't, we won't sort of lock the doors if people are still sat there enjoying themselves, of like course. anywhere, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's flexible in that sense. But Tuesday to Sunday. Not Mondays. And uh, as, as we mentioned before, obviously with it involving wine, it is mainly for adults. It's, it's not a children's... Uh, so uh, can somebody come along just to, to sample the wine, don't have to go through the, the experience, no. but just come along and they taste your wine and, and sit there? They can taste our wine and sit there. Yeah. They can sit there for hours if they want. For us, it doesn't matter. They can, or they can come and just buy the wine. Maybe they've been to the wine yeah. tasting and they want to just come and buy some more wine. They can come and buy some more wine. It's not... Yeah. Although, it, uh, I'd like to see which type of person goes there at 11 o'clock in the morning for a wine tasting. I mean, it would be early 11, but, um, you know, but obviously yeah. getting towards lunch. So exactly, it'd yeah. be nice to, you know, yeah. to, to have the cheese and the wine yes, and to, to, yeah. to uh, get everyone there. And, uh, you know, once the actual wine 
whole process is actually within the whole winery itself yeah. where you're, yeah. you're going to be making. I'm sure it's going to be a fascinating tour exactly. of seeing it from start to finish. Yes. Yeah, but well, we will be we're building on that at the moment. Yeah, that, you know that's something that we're building together with our winemaker. Amazing. Um, so that yeah, we can build the whole experience, and and people will have a choice of different types of tours that they want to do. You know, some people might want to come along and just taste wine and buy it. They might not want to have a trip to the winery. Yeah. Some people, obviously, I'm talking when Gillam's Wine Culture is open. Um, you know, some people might want to just come and buy wine and go they you know some people might want the whole thing a tour of the vineyards a tour of the the winery a tour of the the whole um the whole setup so i think you know a winery in in cyprus in north cyprus in particular is such um an amazing thing uh, you know something that should have been done earlier on i think because um you know we all like uh, going out for dinner i mean don't you think that you know people eat out more here Definitely. um than maybe in other I mean, the locations end of the day, we're a holiday destination yeah aren't we? so yeah you tend to find um that the, the you can go out people go out more often than they eat in yeah um so yeah i mean th it's something that we hope to achieve with the restaurant as well so that people will come up there i mean i think it's unusual that it hasn't been thought of before like you, what we yeah. said you know why hasn't this been thought of before but is it I mean, do you think has it been a long difficult process for the people behind this project i mean you know for the managers it's is challenging it, at times yeah um but as is uh, any any new project mm -hmm. um you know but we're getting there. We've, with Etta Winery, it's there, it's up and running now. Um, have, why haven't people thought about it before? Obviously, nobody can really answer that. Um, but it's something that it should have been maybe done before. Well, maybe this could be the start of... It could be the start of something, uh, something great, yeah. 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 You know, or maybe other people might catch on and think, oh, well, you know, maybe I might do it. Well, why not? Competition is good. But exactly. at the moment, no, you're the first. For, for us, this is something we, we were discussing earlier. Um, you know, for us, if people want to come and, uh, and open a, a winery themselves and plant their own vineyards, then for us, that's great because that means that what we've set out to achieve with regards to wine culture is now in demand. And therefore, we've created this demand so people can come and do maybe two or three centres in North Cyprus. We were talking about wine groups, tours yeah. visiting. Then they can do two or three in, in, in one go. The other thing to mention is we do have um, a, a, a bar, our own, obviously, barrel room as well um, in our basement. And we have a VIP room overlooking the barrel room, which can be hired out for meetings, team building exercises. You know, we can offer that sort of facility yeah. as well. Yes, you were saying that, you know, if you want to just have a meeting mm -hmm. um, or, as you say, any sort of gathering. Gathering, yeah. It's a great location to, to hire out, maybe, yeah. and also to take advantage of, of the wine, of the wine yeah. there. So anyone uh, who wants to just get together yeah. can also, yeah. on a professional basis, can... can, can or or non-professional, you know, if it's yeah. somebody's special birthday and you've got the, a group of 24 people or whatever, then we can, you know... So you can cater. Yeah. I mean, are, is there a limit to the number of people in one group that you can cater for, or does it not really matter? Uh, at the moment, because obviously the tourism centre isn't open, at the moment we're a small team. So um, it's always best to, if you can, call us in advance and let us know how many of you are coming so that we can make sure we have enough people to, to make sure your, their experience yeah. is enjoyable, you know. Um, but eventually we will have enough people to, to cope with, hopefully, coach loads of people coming up to to taste wine. That's good to know. I'm going to ask a really silly question now because I'm just I'm visiting the, the video that we just saw and, and, the, and the, you know, the, the vineyard and the luscious grapes and obviously another byproduct, you say I think is recycled, the, the vine leaves mm -hmm. and the dolma. Mm. Um, do, do we have anything about what, do, what happens to the leaves? I, thought of, I hadn't thought about dolma. Do, the there could be a special honest, market there. Another outlet. Yeah. Ma maybe you can get someone to, yeah, to, 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 make, to make, dolma. Make, make dolma out of the, out of the vine leaves. Maybe. I mean, actually, the, the dolmas are, are finger food as well. Exactly. Maybe yeah. they could go, yeah. I'm not sure if they go with the wine, but anyway. Well, no, they're a bit bitter, I think. A bit bitter, wine, but uh, yeah. still something to think about. But, is, yeah, yeah. but I mean, you know. The, the, Wine and the vineyards are such a you know amazing natural thing that you know you can use everything. Yes. Now yeah. you say you're really you know products and and, and the, you know the, the beauty side of yeah. it, mm, the spa. Yeah. I, I'm I'm sure lots of ladies will come and uh, you know have a drink of wine and also it bathe also, in wine. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. That's the whole <laughs> so point of a wine spa. We've got all these experts coming in, mm -hmm. teaching everyone, and of course you know it's going to be a learning experience for everyone. I mean, you've learned as you yes, said exactly. uh, on this journey. Yeah. And it's an amazing journey. Are you happy to be part of the the uh, the family? Definitely. Definitely, I wouldn't change it. It's, it's, it, for me, it, it, I've got 
I think if you work somewhere, if you've got your heart set into it, for me, it's not not a job. For me, it's it's part being part of the family, being part of the journey. Um, and the great thing is, the whole team is like that. Everyone that you speak to, mm -hmm. that's part of Gillam, um, we all have the same passion. We ha all have the same belief that this is something fantastic and something great that we will all achieve. Um, you know, mm -hmm. for for me, it's it's there's no regrets. Speaking about um, Gillam, we know that the, the reason why it's called Etel Winery is because of the, the, the late uh, wife of the, the founder of the company. Where does Gillam come from? Where's the Gillam part well, from? Uh, the, one of our other um, partners in, in the project is um, one, uh, a foreign an entrepreneur whose surname is Gillam. Right, okay, just so to give that mention as well. It's all inter interrelated. Very nice. So we just need to know, just to confirm why we've got Gillam as well as Etel there. Yes, yes. But um, I want to wish you all the best Thank you. for this venture. And how do we find out about you? Are you on social media? We're on Facebook and Instagram. You can find us, Gillam Vineyard Hotel. Gillam Vineyard Hotel. Yep. If that's what we search for, yep. then you will come up. Will, yes, we will. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, our website isn't live yet, but it will be soon. Again, uh, GillamVineyardHotel.com. Uh, etelwinery.com and gillamswineculture.com they will be live um, mm -hmm. in the future um, but yeah for social media at the moment social media Facebook is our um, main uh, sort of contact yeah. we also obviously have our email addresses um, which again if people want to get in touch with us info at gillamvineyard.com and then obviously they can contact the, our phone number is on Facebook as well so right and you speak Turkish as well as English, I so do, you've got, yes. um, you know, we want to get more locals interested as yes, well, don't we? Yes, exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah. anyone who uh, wants to go along, would you advise somebody to book beforehand, not just turn up? Yeah, I, uh, the people can turn up. We're open, as I said, we have people there yeah. and we're, all, we're there all sort of working anyway. But if you have a, a group and, and it's always advisable maybe to just give us a call and say, look, we're a group of this, what, this many people, we'd yeah. like to come up. Um, but it, you don't have to book. It's not bookings only. You know, people can yeah. just wander in and, and. I'm sure you've got lots of people who see the signs and all of a sudden decide to yeah. turn into the yeah. location, yeah. to the winery, and, and uh, you know, stop off for a, a, a quick refreshment. People on the way home. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? We all like a bit of wine every now and then. Yeah. But so, uh, yeah, so Facebook and Instagram are the yeah. uh, ways to get through. I know that you've been in the Cypress State newspaper recently. Mm -hmm. I know that you're probably going to be in Zoom magazine. Yeah. Uh, I know that you've been interviewed. So, yeah. uh, you've got. Great, uh, you're doing your job very well, thank sales you. and marketing uh, lady. Uh, but thank you very much for coming in today to thank BRT. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I wish you all the best for the winery and for the boutique hotel in the future, and you know for what's coming up in the stages two and three yeah. uh, for your journey. It's going to be a lovely journey. Yes. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you. And uh, who knows, I might come up one day and please do. You'll be more um, than welcome. Maybe you know make a nice little. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it'd be nice. Maybe we could do a, a present for somebody as a gift, couldn't you? Like you should have vouchers. Maybe you know go and spend. Yeah. The day exactly. at the yeah. and yeah. you get a, a yeah. bottle of wine at the end or something yeah. I don't know because yeah. there'll be lots of people who love wine so yes. there's, there's lots yeah. to, to explore exactly. lots to see yes. and you're giving back to the community That's by right. yeah. uh, employing locals as well yeah. so yeah. Uh, send our regards to your uh, superiors to your yeah. managers your bosses to the owners yeah. and thank you for taking us on this wonderful journey thank you thanks a lot and uh, uh, Natalie Haig was our guest on today's program and she is a lovely lady from the winery Etel winery in Ilgaz thanks to everyone who is part of this journey as well thanks for bringing wine to the TRNC with that we say goodbye wishing you all a lovely week until the next time we are here in the studios of Beatty K Nefkosha take care and go wine and go wine and go well bye bye <laughs>